Welcome back to the Pursuit of Accuracy. I'm Josh, and this is going to be part two of the Bergara B14R Heavy. If you haven't seen part one, you definitely need to do that. What we did was we took the factory Bergara B14R Heavy barreled action, and we went out and shot that with basically all the odd and end ammo that I had laying around just to give this a baseline in its factory stock configuration. For part two today, we set out to film the same exact target with the same exact ammunition, but this time with the Timney hit trigger and some bolt shims from triggershims.com. Well, what ended up happening was I made some discoveries with the bolt shims that I wasn't anticipating, so I'm back in here in the studio because I wanna explain exactly what you're going to see and I wanna help you follow along so you can pull as much information out of this as you possibly can. Now, as I said, I saved the first video's target. I never took it off the target stand and all the groups that we shot from video one were still there. So what I did for this video was in the same exact sequence, I shot the same exact ammunition at the same spot on the target, but the original ammunition was shot for dead center. And as I'm shooting these groups today, I'm shooting them in the upper corner. So basically you're able to look at that and see what the gun did factory with the ammunition and then in the corner of that target, what it's doing today. And if you're not familiar with bolt shims, Basically what that's allowing you to do is to change the headspace of your rifle. Now ammunitions like Lapua, SK, and RWS have a pretty similar rim thickness. That's the thickness of the back end of the cartridge. But ammunitions like Ely Match and 10X have a thinner rim thickness. So what may be a good headspace for Lapua may be a loose headspace for Ely. And that's what you're going to see today. So we added two thousandths of bolt shim to this, which is making that headspace tighter. So, well, the rest of it, you're just going to have to see for yourself. I think it's pretty obvious when you look at it. And keep in mind that that's all that we have changed. This is maybe shot three days after part one. So, well, let's get out there and do some shooting. Well, today we have 2,000th worth of shim in the bolt. So that is sucking up 2,000th worth of headspace so the headspace is tighter. And we have the Timney hit. And everything else has stayed the same. We're actually going to shoot at the same targets. I am think I'm just going to go for the top right. So this is SK Standard Plus, and as you can tell, the, the wind's worse today, but we're going to have to deal with it. I threw that one way right. Still does not like the SK Standard Plus. So headspace has changed nothing with that. Um, didn't like before, doesn't like it now. Not shocked. I'm gonna try the SK Rifle Match. Still again using factory magazine. Okay, um, hard to say if that's an improvement yet or not. Well, still splitting groups, uh, maybe slightly better. Um, I don't know that I would really call that a success, but so far, I think it's been about the same. SK long range match, you know, some guns love it, some barrels will hate it, you know, hard to say. I go, same thing top right. Hopefully it's on paper. Woo! Oh boy, that's a lot hotter. Yeah, that's okay. Wow. You could hear that one. That was wild. Not only was that fourth one just like super high, I think even you guys can hear it even though the audio gets clipped. It was way hotter. If we were shooting this over a chrono, that was probably at least 30 to 40 feet per second faster. I mean, just crazy. So yeah, we're gonna move on from those and move on to one of the good shooting ammos we had last time, which was Lapua Long Range. All right, let's see what this does. 
Okay, that's not looking real hot out of our first group. Yeah, um, I don't know if that's better, honestly. We're gonna shoot another five. The first group was kind of not good. Um, second group kind of coming in. Be fair to it, we're gonna shoot five more. We'll go to the uh, bottom right corner of that target. That's uh, pretty interesting. Last time it was a pretty good performer. Um, this time, not so much. Same thing as last time, we're gonna shoot uh, the first five of this RWS special match, and we're gonna kind of ignore the results because we're switching lubrications. That's going to impact the first couple of rounds here. So we have three on my point of aim, one right, one left. So far, this is really not looking good. Um, not sure if shimming it up and tightening up the headspace has helped it at all. Um, in fact, it may have hurt it in this case. Okay, that one's looking pretty good. I think we're shooting five more. We're gonna drop down to the bottom corner. Not a bad group, um, not a great group, but as before, we're swapping over to Healy match. And again, these uh, first ones will be a Fowler, and I have a sneaking suspicion about what may be occurring here. So I tighten up the headspace, and most of the ammunition, I would say, is the same, if not like the Lapua and the special match, maybe slightly worse. So I have a suspicion that this was headspace pretty good for those. They have a kind of thicker rim thickness, and the Ely has a thinner rim thickness. So I'm curious to see if after we shoot these five, if it improves the groups with Ely because we've tightened up the headspace. At if we wanted to shoot RWS or Lapua, if we need to back off and go back to the normal headspace. But uh, let's see. I've never seen tighter headspace really hinder anything. But let's shoot our five. This is our Fowler's. Oh, there's a wasp. Oh. <laughs> oh, I hope the camera got that, but we nuked him. All right. We're going to go to the bottom right because there's a group pretty close to that one. Okay. Well, that was an improvement. Let's shoot the next five of this lot. Then we'll move to the next lot. We're going to go back up to the top right. And a little bit of left to right string in there. It's going to be very, very interesting if it also improves this lot. Because like I said, probably was headspaced pretty well for Lapua and the RWS. And so we kind of saw that either stay the same or degrade a little bit in performance. And now that we move to the thinner rim thickness stuff like Ely Match, we are seeing a little bit of improvement. But, you know, let's see what this next lot does. Okay, so we did have the first one that was out. The other ones kind of went right in there. We're going to go bottom right. All right, so we're going to put this hypothesis to the test. I've removed the shim. So there was a 2000 shim in the bolt. I removed it. We're going to go back to Lapua 
and uh, we're just gonna go to the next open target. It is a cold bore now, so kind of ignore the first group. Hard to tell from here, but I think those last four went in the same hole. And might have shot one too many, but it does appear and it's back shooting better. So we're also gonna shoot the special match again. Another good performer back when we had the factory set up. Very, very interesting. I don't mind at all being wrong. I get to learn something and it's pretty cool. I uh, set out to just do this video thinking that I shim it up, decrease the headspace, and you know that's gonna improve everything across the board. What we're finding out is, you know, there's a headspace that some of this ammunition wants to be at and some it doesn't want to be. And they send you a kit. So you get to experiment. So if I was gonna shoot Ely, I would go back to the shims, but for the non-Ely ammo with a regular rim thickness, I think it's probably best to stay where you were, factory shimming. Of course, yours may be a little different. You could throw a thousand shim in, it could improve things, but let's ignore this. Uh, we're fouling it in again, RWS special match. Had one out. Same hole. And now it seems to be performing just like it did before we had the shims. This is pretty wild. One leak out. Yeah, super interesting. All right, so what in the heck did we learn? Well, we learned that the Bergara with the factory magazine still remains to be 100% reliable on the XLR. I've had no feeding issues with this. The gun has worked pretty much flawlessly, haven't had any misfires, no problems out of this whatsoever. We tested the same ammunition again. Ideally, we probably test other ammunition to find something, but the Lapua and the RWS remains to be very good shooters. And interestingly enough, we figured out that if we add the 2000 shim to this, the Ely match comes around. It didn't shoot as good before on the factory headspace. Now we've sucked that up and the Ely match started performing better. And with a little lot testing in that shim, I think we could find something in the Ely line that really hammers out of this rifle. But being a two-edged sword that rimfire is, we also, I think, lost some performance on the regular rim thickness ammunition like the SK, most importantly, the Lapua and the special match. The SK never really shot that great out of this rifle to begin with, but the Lapua, we 100% went backwards. The special match 
we 100% went backwards. Now, once we removed that shim and went back, I think they came back in. And of course, you know, this isn't really lot testing. This is random ammo I have. It's like one lot per. Ideally, you find something that it tends to like and you start testing around that ammunition and you find something in hammer. So maybe we'll do that. I will try some different ammunition and we'll come back with a more traditional part two where we're gonna just shoot it a little bit at 50 and then we're gonna stretch its legs. We'll put it on paper at uh, 50, we'll shoot it at steel at 50, 100, 150, 180 yards. And who knows, we may take it out to the range and go to 400 with it. But hopefully you guys pick something up. I appreciate you watching. We'll catch you on the next one.